Hi, folks. It's I'm your middleest brother, Travis McRoy. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McRoy. This is weird, and I don't I don't like this. It's Just weird, like- right? Yeah, it's, it's it's like when you it's like a flat tire. You can feel that something's just off, and it's that Justin's not here. He's on a boat. He's um he's on a cruise. Um, he said we weren't allowed to go. Uh, yeah, so that was weird. It he was said weird. that only one of us could be at the ocean. And, he said it was something about time. maritime law. Yeah, well, it's kind of like that Kiefer Sutherland show, Designated Survivor, and mm-hmm. that if there is, God forbid, but if there is a um. Uh, you know, a, a, that movie with the Poseidon adventure sort of situation. Mm-hmm. Well, you and I can carry the torch if there I, is a Poseidon adventure situation. Just quick sidetrack. I think it would be great if on Designated Survivor, every uh, like se- season ender and then season starter was like at the end of the season. It was like, good news, uh, Kiefer. We found a new president. You don't yeah. have to be president anymore. And then something happens. That he has to be president again every year. Oh, okay. And hopefully it goes like 12 seasons. Yeah. And- so like the sec- secretary of agriculture like flies back from an extended trip in Dubai mm-hmm. and is like, what's up, motherfucker? I'm back. Bet you thought I was in the room when the big boom happened. But no, no, no. Anyway, give me that president badge. And he's like, oh, thank goodness. I oh, didn't want to be president a lot. But then he falls in a toilet and dies. <laughs> Anyways, so anyway, so that's Travis and my spec script for Designated Survivor season two premiere. Very excited about it. So Justin's not here. Uh, so in lieu of his being, uh, we are putting up the Candle Nights episode from last year, which we recorded as part of the TV show. Uh, if you have watched our TV show, which you should, I think it's pretty fun. Uh, you'll recognize some of the stuff because it is what we filmed. It was our last day of filming. We we're all extremely tired. I think it's fair to say very emotional. Um, I, and so, yeah. Something to keep in mind. Um, one, it's a live show. Two, uh, we're recording it in the auditorium at City Hall. Uh, so it's not like we were, you know, it's not a state of the art recording. The audio's recording. not good. Yeah, the yeah, audio's, yeah. The audio, it's listenable and you can hear what we're saying, but, um, the, that, that auditorium was invented, was built before, uh, uh, amplified sound was invented. And so there, there's a bit of a trade off. And I apologize for that. Um, but it's a, I think it's a really fun episode and I think you'll like it, uh, regardless. Um, some other thing, uh, I, I just edited the episode and Travis, unfortunately, I did cut the celebrity miracle bit because it's, it is, that part was unlistenable because you couldn't hear it at all, which is, well, a bummer, and, but. and that's also, that's for the TV show. That's fine. I understand. Yes, Travis got a surprise celebrity guest and it's, it's on a TV show, but it, it, unfortunately, just like it's not listenable at all. Um, and what else? I think, I think that's all the sort of caveats. We're going to start out with our dad just hamming it up. What else is new? Um, but yeah, we realize this is weird that we are publishing our, one of our holiday specials that we recorded in a non-holiday September and publishing in a definitely non-holiday March, but... That's just how we do things. I here. mean, it's it's the traditional candle lights in March. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, thanks for listening. Enjoy really? the episode. That's we'll be it. back in a bit for the Mitty Zone. So, see you soon. Hey, Christmas. Yeah, it's bad enough. They got the sheets thing. They got the Schmanners thing. They got the Sawbones thing. They got the buffering thing. Apparently, no room for the Adventure Zone. But that's okay. No, no, no. Thank you for acting like you know what that is. Um, hi, I'm Clint McElroy. I am some of the people up here that you have seen on this stage this evening are my fault so far. So I take full credit there. Uh, but I serve a very important duty tonight. Um, for what? Are you laughing because I said duty? (laughs) This is a prime bim-bam crowd. (laughs) No, seriously, though, I'm here for a very important purpose. The producers and the director and the crew told me that if I shoehorned myself into this TV show one more time, I'd qualify for an Emmy. So, here I am. No, but seriously, on a serious note, Candle Nights is important to all of us, and I think you'd probably agree with me if you weren't all hammered, but a very important component of every Candle Nights observation is our Candle Nights uh, carolers. Here's the problem. 
We've run a little over, and they have to do a tree lighting in Guyandot in just a few minutes. So, uh, and the, those three people came from Australia. I'll tell you the guy and not joke later. That's why nobody laughed at it. But they prepared all these songs. There's just not enough time. So they're going to do a very unique rendition of four different Christmas songs. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy tonight and welcome our candlelight, candle night. Knew I was going to do that. Carolers. Deck the halls with bells of holly, fa la 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 la. Tears and bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Dreidel, 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 d
because uh, we had to shoot a bunch of stuff for the TV show. And it was, you know, it was our last day of shooting. so stressful. Are we going to get it all? We had this live show. I always get really stressed before live shows. And then, it, like, a, just a silly thing happened. I shouldn't... Okay, I can't make a joke out of it because it's uh, mortifying and maybe the one of the worst moments of my whole life. Uh, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> do you want me to say what you said No, to me? I'll do okay, it. Do it. You're I, a big Because I, I have to frame it correctly because it's not a joke. It's not a funny thing that happened. I was going on a Starbucks run. Can't say Starbucks. The coffee zone. We went to oh, the by co- the way, <laughs> we can't say brand names on our television show. It's so illegal. It's illegal. So you'll periodically hear us replace those uh, with, with uh, lesser known brand names. So th- what is it again? The- I was going to the coffee zone, and I was, so I was being very selfless, making just a sweet Java run, just getting some, just four cups of mud for my family and friends. <laughs> and I hopped in the whip, and... Wh- whose whip? I hopped in Justin's whip, <laughs> and I bumped, or maybe even nudged... It was kind of a kiss. This is not a joke. I, I kissed with my car, the car that belongs to the mayor of Huntington. And it's... And when Griffin says, just do want to reiterate, when Griffin says his car, he does in fact mean my car. And I wish it's very funny now. And it was very funny then. It's not, I, 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 not it is not funny. I am mortified beyond belief. I wish everyone could have been present <laughs> for just the maniacal energy and face. Griffin made as he came down the center aisle of the City Hall Auditorium to let us know that this had happened. I was looking for cameras, like, come on. No, it was was a genuine genuine car-to-car smooch, and I feel awful about it. The mayor, uh, Mayor Steve Williams, best mayor we've ever had in Huntington, and I wouldn't say that. I I would still say that even if I hadn't smooched his car today. (laughs) The funniest thing in our television show, absolutely. Uh, Is the mayor. He's the mayor. He's very, very, he's very funny and very kind of the best mayor we've ever had. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. So vote Steve Williams. Yeah, please vote Mayor Steve Williams. Um, So what we do on this show, if you haven't listened before, is... um, It could happen. No, who who here has not listened before? Just give a woo. Okay. Yes, yes, it's a good happens. Uh, we take your questions and we turn them alchemy like into wisdom. Uh, we ask some folks that I guess are going to be here. Yeah, I think mostly Maybe. here. Maybe yeah. most of we'll them are here for, uh, for their questions. Some are about candle nights, observations, and some aren't. This one's coming in kind of hot, so a lot of them aren't. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to start. Should I start with this first one here? Yeah, hit it. Great. I have worked in an office for several years now, and we always exchange gifts during our holiday party. The gifts are usually your standard generic type, like Starbucks gift cards or a knick-knack for their desks. And I've always gotten the same gifts for every employee. The trouble is, within the past year, two of my friends I've known for 10 years have started working with me at the office. I'd like to get them more personalized gifts since they are my friends more than my coworkers, but I fear that this may make the others in the office feel slightly jilted or left out. Should I just give them the same gift as everyone else to make things fair? Give them the gifts I really want to and hope the others don't notice or care? Those rhymed. I don't know if that was intentional. Yeah, that's a fun little poem. Or should I just pony up the extra dough for both and give them the office gifts at the party and the friend gifts outside the office? That's from quality versus quantity in the Queen City. Love that alliteration. Are you here? Hey, what's up? It's, we'll Photoshop. We'll like CGI. It's we'll fine. CGI. We'll CGI in the sound of you saying yes. Yeah. I'm here. What I love about that is that no point in that question is the option of get everybody nicer gifts. Oh yeah, that's not even up for debate. Well, what are they gonna do? Buy thirty zunes? <laughs> that might help zune out. Yeah. Whoa. Hey guys, did you see this spike? Someone bought thirty. <laughs> they're, they're crazy for zunes in Topeka. <laughs> Zune town, baby. Or you could hide this, you buy everybody a travel mug from, the, from Java Zone, but then your two friends, they unscrew the lid, what's inside? It's a secret Zune. 
There's a little Zoon in my mug. I didn't know I'd put coffee and I ruined my Zoon. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is what everybody in Topeka sounds like. Oh, no. I have an idea. Oh, boy. Okay. Here's what you do. Okay. Leading up to your, your holiday Christmas party, you start spreading around that you hate Todd and Susan. Oh. And you're not getting them anything this year because you hate them so much. But you let them know ahead of time that you actually love them a lot. Okay. And you'll be getting them a nicer gift, but outside of the party. That way it doesn't look like you're playing favorites. It looks like you hate Todd and Susan. I, I would like to posit that there is no way you can give your two friends a gift later because when you tell them, I've got a really special gift for you later, there's no chance that in their mind they don't think you're not talking about having sex with them. <laughs> got a really special gift, but it's... For later? For later? What? In private, just it's for you and me. It's a private present. That or, like, even worse, they'll expect something heartfelt. <laughs> I'm, I made this, like, with your name on it, or I want to have sex with you. Like, neither one are both, they're both pretty rough. Yeah. I don't think oh, gross. Not rough. <laughs> Not a very good job. Guess hey. I'm... Move on? Yeah, do you guys want to yell him? Wait, hold on. Oh, shit, no, wait. Just one don't, last get, idea. don't get crazy for it yet. And I'm sorry I swore. That was the only one of the whole show, I promise. What if you gave everybody in the office a $20 gift card to Starbucks, but you gave Todd and Susan a $1,000 gift card to Starbucks? I love that. Um, that's just a, such a bad idea, Trav. But it clearly shows, like, I like you the best, but no one can tell from a distance. <laughs> They open it up and they see the four digits, and you're like, <laughs> "Stay cool." <laughs> Actually, no, because like, I cannot imagine anything worse than like a, a Starbucks gift card. I then have to keep track of for the rest of my life. Yeah, a one thousand dollars Starbucks gift card is essentially like if you got to like you learned to fly, you got the super human ability to fly, and you're like, "Well, I better fly all the time." <laughs> That's, uh, that sucks, because for a while, you're going to be big-time Starbucks bo- boy, like, the best Starbucks boy. Everybody goes, it's always on you, no problem. And then that well's going to dry up. It happened to MC Hammer, it'll happen to you. It happened to Blank Check. <laughs> happened to it Blank happened Check, to Blank baby. That's what the movie Blank Check is about. They gave him a blank Starbucks gift card, and you're like, ha-ha, suckers. Uh, do you guys, do you want a Yahoo now, though? Yes. This is a good one. Sent in by Abby Likens. Thank you, Abby. It's by Yahoo Answers user, never too soon, who asks, Santa Claus with six-pack abs. You may have heard the latest unbelievable movement by the leftists to not portray Santa Claus as overweight as it sends the wrong message to children. Is this another attempt to do away with every value and tradition in this country? If these idiots had their way, it would not be baseball, apple pie, and ice cream, but curling, rice cakes, and sorbet. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds awesome. awesome. That sounds amazing. 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 Very good. Yes, thank you. Uh, is this country headed in the wrong direction because of these sexy leftist Santa Clauses? <laughs> Straight up, curling, V baseball, baseball, length of game, 100 years. <laughs> Curling, unknown. <laughs> lost, lost your time. Um, hmm. Uh, there is nothing I like more than a cut, Santa. Just. A, <laughs> I don't know how you all feel, but just a <sighs> a ripped, progressive, pro-choice, sexy Santa, Santa Claus. Just, I just picture him curling down the field. The field, maybe? Just, I'm, I'm with her. And with him. <laughs> <laughs> I love, one thing I love is when he's coming down the chimney sometimes and the bottom of his shirt gets stuck on the hook. Yeah. And then he's still sliding down and you just see that like divot between his abs. Yeah. I like, I like the way that we... And his dick? <laughs> That's the last time we'll curse. That's the last one. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, you sure did, bud. 
my, my, my goof em up was just like quick in the moment. Yours was like a featured player. <laughs> For three weeks, I had carte blanche. I can't put this genie back in the bottle. Yeah. It's okay. not a bad word. It's beautiful human sexuality. <laughs> if you think it's a bad mur- word, maybe it's a problem with you. That's a very sexy Santa Claus pr- position for you to take, Justin. Very progressive. Very progressive. Progressive um, and sexy. What, I mean, what would it take, like, would it have to be like Norman Rockwell sees, like, a sexy Santa fireman calendar and is like, that's him now. Norman Rockhard. Norman Rockhard <laughs> sees a sexy Santa Claus. Where's that, where's that miracle on 34th Street? Dude, let's get, let's get Channing Tatum in the mix. That's Santa Claus. Hello. I just almost cursed so hard. Fudge. That's good. Yeah. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Christmas Magic Mike. Christmas. Well, there's probably a better <laughs> joke name for it. No. That's <laughs> no. it. Okay. No, you're right. It's Christmas I Magic Mike. I went to Mike the show. well and that's all I came up with. No, and you are the well master. So that's, it's got to be it. For the last several years, my husband and I lived in Hawaii when visiting the mainland for wintertime festivities. uh, We would pick up a bunch of coffee and macadamia nuts to give as presents to family and friends. Everyone loved the gifts because they were, quote, fresh from Hawaii. Although we did purchase them in large quantities from Walmart. (laughs) We have since moved to Ohio. I work in a museum that uh, happens to have a gift shop that features Ohio-themed and locally made stuff. I also get a 25% discount at this store. Is it weird to give my fellow mainlanders Ohio-themed <laughs> presents, or am I good? That's from Cheapskate in Columbus. You, you have to be here if you live in Columbus, right? Yeah. Uh, first of all, how dare you? Because I guarantee you, your family and friends that you gave those fake Hawaiian presents to would have a night would be like, Margaret, sit down. Tonight... A little taste. A little taste. <laughs> a little taste of the islands. A- Aloha, Margaret. It's time. Crack. I just feel like you know there's anything different about the coffee tonight, Margaret. Aloha. Oh, we're out of our reg- We're out of fold. Well, we're out of uh, ground town. <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah, ground, ground town. town is yeah, a good name for you. coffee. Yes. Right on. Okay. TM, TM, TM. TM, TM, TM. We're out of ground town. Oh, break into the no. What? No! What? My Hawaiian coffee? It's not time for that! Eating, eating these Hawaiian macadamia nuts, you can really taste the Pacific wind. <laughs> <laughs> I also, do, do, do your friends and family know you work at an Ohio museum? Okay, okay. Man, that's the worst crime! <laughs> you can't hand them an Ohio magnet and just stare at them like. <laughs> the good news is. I saw this and thought of you? The, The good news is, if the gift shop at your museum is like every museum gift shop in the world, your 25% discount means that everything is just 300% too expensive. (laughs) So you're not real, it's not good scam you've cooked up here. I also like, like, if it's the thought that counts, the thought that you're showing is, I forgot to get you something until I got off work. Except you haven't. You sent us this question, you have time. (laughs) It's September. It's September. September. (laughs) I'm, I'm, How bad is your Amazon setup? I have a lot on my mind, I think, over the next two months, probably, maybe, I guess. I think when you buy something as a gift from a museum gift shop, you are saying, here is a small, kind of crummier version of a thing I saw in a museum today. Which is to say, the true gift is an art heist. <laughs> That's, that's a gift that says, I put some thought into this. Yes. Yeah. And to prove my thought, here are the blueprints. <laughs> uh, Griffin, how about you start another Yahoo? Okay. Uh, this one was sent in by... Sorry. No, no, no. no, Sorry. My mic had an interference. I don't even know what that music I don't, was. I literally don't know what that setup that's was. That's not the music. It's just a... Just my mic can't Is your cell phone on? Because that can cause it. Uh, oh, that's probably what it is. Click. Okay. I love the iPhone 7, by the way. Yeah. yeah. There's a small boy that lives in it. He's like, <laughs> going to sleep now. <laughs> Thank you for turning on my cell phone. Yeah, Amelie lives in the iPhone yeah. 7. <laughs> I'm sleepy. Good um, night, sir. <laughs> good, good calls today, I thought. 
You got so good. Your mom text. I'll keep it quiet for now. But I'm, I'm going to sleep on this Instagram picture you left. You try to you try to do a drunk sext, and she's like, No, I don't oh, think so. Oh. Respect yourself and your friends. Yeah, you thank me for this in the morning. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Griffin. Just yeah, start, sure. start okay, a Yahoo. Okay, here comes a real Yahoo that I'm going to read. It was sent in by Kayla Morgan. I want to munch! I want to munch! This is Munch Squad. It's a show within a show. For the eight people, this is the first time listening. They're so confused. Yeah, that's good. By the way, that was so loud that I think somebody next door is going to call the cops on City Hall. <laughs> um, I wasn't actually planning on doing a Munch Squad tonight, but there are people who made Munch Squad t-shirts. Are you here? Hold on, oh, they couldn't make it. They were They didn't make it. Is everybody wearing a Munch Squad t-shirt? <laughs> Munch Squad is where we talk to fast... Oh, throw them up yeah. here. Yeah! Oh. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They got a 2XL in the mix? Oh, I can't put it on. I'm wearing a mic. But We're wearing mics or else we'd put them on, I promise. Yes, we will wear them with pride. They're... That's a great design. Yeah, that's super good. Okay, it's also, uh, there's like uh, 10 letters each cut from a different fast food logo, meaning it is the shirt we can have on television the least. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, Munch Squad is a series where we go to the fast food, junk food, and fast casual professionals to ask them what they're working on, and we take it direct from the horse's mouth. And uh, I got a press release for you that I think you're really going to enjoy, especially right now. The, it, it probably has the four best opening words uh, after, like, the Gaysburg address, I guess. <laughs> this election season, Doritos. true member of the Munch Squad, those are four words you're like, I, you have my attention. <laughs> go, go on. This election season Doritos, and then the comment, one of the marquee brands from PepsiCo's Frito-Lay division, yeah, you mean Doritos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Is partnering with Rock the Vote, the largest nonpartisan Nonprofit organization in the country dedicated to building long-term youth political power to engage and mobilize young people to register to vote and participate in elections. Again, Doritos. <laughs> As part of the boldest choice campaign, <laughs> the Doritos brand is introducing a limited edition Doritos bag. Yes. Created for those not registered to vote. <laughs> now, hold on. Because... <laughs> A, Dor- a Dorito hunter like myself who wants to collect them all, I hear that and I say, well, guess I'm sitting this one out. Because no. I've got to get this limited edition bag, a Rito. Yeah, imagine my surprise at finding out that there's an overlap between people who love Doritos and people who don't vote. <laughs> if you actually go to the polling machine and you try it, it's one of the touchscreen ones, and you do it and you have cheese dust on your finger, it's just like, no. No. I would love so much to be a fly on the wall for the human being that goes, I'm not voting this year. Tummy rumble, tummy rumble. <laughs> I wish there was a chip for me. <laughs> you got me, Ritos. I'm in. Uh, I ha- it has no taste, no crunch, and no chips to illustrate that if you don't make a choice, you don't get a choice. Wait, wait, wait. Read the... Re- sorry. No? No. No. What doesn't it have... No taste, no crunch, and no chips. It's just a blank it's bag. It's just an empty bag? No, it's just like one of the bags they'd get on Lost. Here's a quote. Let's take it from the experts. Who cares what we think? This one comes to us from uh, Jennifer Sands, uh, Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Frito-Lay, who says, This election season, Doritos believes the boldest choice is making a choice. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly bolder than not making a choice. 
We have always believed every single person can make an impact. We all have a voice, and it's important we exercise that voice and be heard. We make Doritos, I just want to say again. <laughs> that's who I am. Our campaign reinforces the idea that if you don't make a choice, someone else chooses for you. As a brand new for being bold, Doritos is rallying one of the most important causes in America, making a choice at the polls. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, okay. the, that's the message yes. from Doritos. This has they been a lot to- of fun. This is an empty bag with nothing on it. <laughs> Three ninety nine. It's a bargain. Is it real? Uh, how, do, how are they distributing this? Because they can't sell an empty plain bag at a store and you show up and you're like, you go to Kroger and you're like, hey, Kroger employee, there's a printing error in this bag and also a chipping error because there's no chips in it. And they're like, no, it's because you got to vote. Oh, okay. That's weird. <laughs> no, it's like the scene out of Hook where as soon as you vote, the chips appear within the bag. <laughs> I knew there was a reason to vote. For chips. It makes chips magically appear in this fake Doritos bag. Um, I just want to say this, and I don't know how everybody in the room is going to vote. I have a pretty good idea, but I don't know how everybody... (laughs) If this effort works, it's not great, right? Like, it's not great. You know, they had record turnout in America. Oh, why? Yeah. They elected Toots as the driving cat from SNL. It says here, and and our vice president triumphed the insult comic dog. It didn't go great. Thank you, Doritos. Uh, Here comes a Yahoo for real, though. It was sent by Kayla Morgan. Thank you, Kayla. It's by Yahoo Answers user Kim, who asks... My dad broke his wrist, and when asked about Christmas, says, All I want is a new wrist. (laughs) What should I get him? Uh, A new wrist. wrist. New wrist. I mean, it's right there in 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 the ass. Do you know, as like an adult who has to get Christmas presents for so many people, so, like, sorry, I guess. Yeah. yeah, you're so generous, Travis. If if someone would look at me and say, here's exactly what I want for Christmas. <laughs> a that big would series be so, of bone and muscle tissue. I would like a new joint, please. Even then, I'm like, okay, thank you for giving me a cr- concrete goal. Yeah, sure. An, an unattainable one, unless you're the bone collector. It's 2016! I have not seen the bone collector. I am assuming this is a film in which... A person goes around just getting the bones folks crave. So like a really scary tooth fairy, you wake up in the morning, you're like, uh, uh, I, oh, I, think, I think of it more as like the guy you meet like in a bar at two in the afternoon. Like, yeah, you want a bone? I can get you a bone. No problem. How what often are you meeting yeah, that guy? Hold on. What do you mean? Character. Tibula? Fibula? Is that one? Sydney, is tibula a bone? No. Okay. Thanks, sweetie. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't finish the question. Uh, I don't think these details are going to be elucidate. They're not going to teach us anything. But my dad, who likes to do everything around the house, was cleaning the gutters, fell down, shattered his wrist. To add insult to injury, it shattered it. Like, we can't get this guy a wrist part. We are talking full replacement. <laughs> full rebuild. My dad was doing some dumb stuff on the roof, like Johnny Knoxville, his wrist exploded. To add insult Wait, to in- hold on. He was cleaning the gutters. How did that transition into him doing some dumb stuff on the roof? I have just assumed he was also doing stunts. I spilled cheer one on myself. Oh, boy, look at the fussy boy. TV! CGI that out, fellas and ladies. All the CGI team. Uh, to add insult to injury, my mom just left, uh, just left him a few weeks ago. Okay, hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hey, Wait. you did we'll not turn, get we'll this, turn this around. <laughs> you, when you pre pro this question with us backstage, you did not get this far. <laughs> so, it does change my answer as to what you should get him. Anything else, Griffin? Hey, if you see the words late stage, just skip ahead, okay? A hole. Two things. <laughs> Poe Buddy's nerfed. 
Two, I think this opens up some exciting new gift-giving opportunities. (laughs) The first is Billboard Dad. Billboard Dad. Uh, Billboard Dad. (laughs) Billboard Dad was an Olsen movie in which... Something happened to the mom, and I'm I'm at, I'm right now uh, my KD ratio on saying dumb things during this episode of the live show is pretty whack. So I'll just assume something horrible happened to her, uh, and so the Olsons were like Billboard Dad. It was a really iconic scene in the movie. They turned to face each other and they just went Billboard Dad. <laughs> so they got up on a billboard and then they found a new mom for him. We're going to do some money zone spots. I thought of another thing I should preface really quick in that um, Travis is about to do a sad libs here in a second. And there was a big visual gag there that is definitely not going to come through uh, where Justin and I were hiding behind him sort of in the background of the set, holding up signs, telling people to applaud and well, laugh see, wa- you, wildly. I got no, you got to tell it to him. You didn't have to tell them that. You could have just made them think that it was just people finally giving no, sad libs their due. That's a fate worse than death. No, we were holding up signs telling people to give like a standing ovation in Travis's shitty bit. Although uh, I and, think probably half of it was sincere. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to credit all of it to the signs. I'm saying that it was maybe the best one I've ever written. Yeah. So, like, maybe that came through. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, maybe tra- be- tra- Travis. Uh-huh. Let's get that money, because there's just two of us, which means we get double double the yeah. money. I think that's how that well, mathematically works out. I want to tell you, Griffin. Yeah, please. About what I'm just now realizing is called movement watches. Oh, you dumb, dumb animal. Well, it's... It, it, it's it, <sighs> The name of it is MVMT Watches. Yeah. And I haven't put together that that's movement. The whole time you just thought it was movement. I just thought it was MVMT, you know? Um, Like, okay, go. I have a movement watch. I do too. It looks fucking great. It looks really good. Uh, It's like one of the few wearable items that I own that I have actually gotten compliments on. Um, it's, uh, It's nice and big. You just look down at it and it's like, boom, there's a time. Booyah. What's up? It's 4 It's 420. Nice. Smoke them out. Here's the thing: the watch He's, always the watch only says it's four twenty. So, yeah. like as a timepiece, it is unfortunately, um, it's right two times a day, right? You can, Griffin, you can, you can fix that. No, it's not no, important. I'm, ju- I'm just kidding. It's, it's it it doesn't only say four twenty. It's important that during the advertisement, we don't say this watch is inherently broken. That's also true. Um, here's the thing: these watches, they're slick. Like these mm. are good, you know, leather bands, metal pants. Like they are really good looking watches. And they start at just $95, which I, I, I'm telling you, you wear a watch like this, people are going to assume it was like $500, $600. It's, they're, and I'm not just saying this because they're a sponsor. They're beautiful watches. Yeah, they're um, really good. They've sold over 1 million watches in 160 countries. Um, and, and you can get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash brother. Um, step up your watch game, get in there. Yeah, just go check them out. I think you're going to like how they look. MVMTwatches.com slash brother. I want to tell you about Betterment, which is a, uh, investment solution for, uh, I, I don't know how many folks listening to this think like, boy, I'm so, uh, replete with cash and I want to make sure that I'm using it in the right, uh, in the right way. Um, but Betterment's going to help you do that, uh, with the same strategies that financial advisors use, uh, with, with clients who have millions of dollars. And if you don't have millions of dollars, you could just sort of live like you do, which might be kind of fun. Um, it is, uh, they, they use time tested investing principles with the transparency and ease of use you expect from great technology. Uh, they have lower fees and and taxes than, than a lot of their competitors. Um, and they, they really care that you reach your financial goals and, and that's why they keep their fees low. Also, I'm just reading this now. Their CEO, John has been named a 30 under 30. He's a, he's an alumni like me who are part of the club. John hit me up. You know, let's go to let's go to the the next meeting together, and we can, um, you know, we can really run the town. He now was also named. He was also forty under forty, which I didn't fucking realize was a another what? thing that I have to strive. For. Yeah, Trav, you can I can still get out. in there. <gasps> yeah, it's not now. Listen, and yeah. John John will be the first one to tell you this. Not quite as prestigious as thirty under thirty. Do you and, think that uh, it's like a legacy thing that because one of us is in there it'll be easier or do you think it'll be harder? Because they're like, we've already got a macro. Well, well inherently, Travis, there are ten more people that make the cut, so I say it's easier. Okay, fair enough. Now here's the thing we do want to tell you. Investing involves risks. 
There's no guarantee. This isn't. It's it's risky to do it, but they, you know, they have the invested principles. They know the stuff. I, I they, they know it, the stuff certainly better than we do, as evidenced by our stumbling through this advertisement. Exactly. Um, this, this is a, a pretty wild bonus feature. For a limited time, if you sign up for Betterment, you may qualify for a free Canary home security system to help secure your home. Two things. First of all, uh-huh. love it. You got that money. You're getting that money to work for you to make more money. Now you got to make sure that you have a panic room that you can put all the money inside. This is vital. you got to have a panic room. It's 2017. What are you doing if you don't have a panic room already? Second thing, is a canary home security system just a canary that they put in there, and then if it dies, you know there's a carbon monoxide problem. That's what I have to assume. So you can check it out at betterment.com slash M-B-M-B-A-M. Betterment, investing made better. Um, I have a Jumbotron message here, uh, and it is for a comic called Dinosaur Hunters. You can read Dinosaur Hunters at... M- well, let me. Oh gosh, there's. I keep my computer so far away from me, and I try to like just fucking no scope it. But um, when it's a link like this, mmdhcomic.com. Go to that website or follow the creator at mattmandh on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And this is the description for Dinosaur Hunters. In a world with real problems that are not dinosaurs that need to be fought with giant robots, five jerks whose job it is to fight dinosaurs using their giant robots finally have to do their job, which is fighting dinosaurs using their giant robots. The robots fight dinosaurs in a comic. If you don't want that, I don't know what to tell you because this is about robots fighting dinosaurs. Bing, oh, bang, boom. There Straight it is. to the point. No faking. I I'm I'm a f- I don't know about beating up dinosaurs like maybe if they're like evil cartoon dinos but like maybe these sca- these maybe they guys. meant all like uh, debating with dinosaurs oh I see it's just these scaly guys don't don't have any problems with me n- inherently you don't know any- that yeah it's probably true so again mmdhcomic.com go check it out I also have a message for future Emily from past Emily hi Emily. I'm guessing whenever you get this, you'll need to pick me up. Maybe it's your birthday. Maybe it's just February, which no one likes. And there's more practical ways to cheer yourself. Uh, nope, did that bad. Oh, hi, Justin. See? Welcome. Hi, Justin. Welcome back to the podcast. Are there more practical ways to cheer yourself up? Sure. Deal with it. Love past Emily. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and we nailed it because it's around March 6th or whenever. Yeah, we're wicked around March 6th right now. Um. This is, I don't know that there is a more practical way to pick yourself up. Nope. This is it. We It's scientifically tested and kid tested, mother approved. Having us say your name out loud is the ultimate pick me up. And that, that sounds conceited to say, but we've, guys, we've taken it in front of many focus groups and every time. What's up? Ch- see, check this out. Hey, Derek. And now if a Derek out there heard that, it's like, oh, I got a little spring in my step. Um, so we're about to hop back into the episode. Should we go ahead and do the, the wrap up stuff? Yeah, thanks to um, thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of the theme song as a departure off the album, putting the days to bed. Uh, thanks for maximum fun. Uh, th- thank you for maximum fun, God. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks to Max Fun for having us. You can go to maximumfun.org and check out all their great podcasts. Um, and uh, I guarantee you're going to find a bunch that you like. Also, you can go to McElroyShows.com and check out all the podcasts and videos that we do, uh, like the Adventure Zone, Sawbones, Schmanners, Rose Buddies, uh, and videos like Monster Factory and stuff. Um, so, anything else? Uh, yeah, before we let you go, the Max Fun Drive is coming up. Oh, and, shit. And we're working hard on some of the best episodes of the year. Tune in during the drive to catch these extra awesome episodes and hear about the exclusive thank you gifts we have in store for new and upgrading members. They are seriously amazing. Plus, it's your chance to show your support for My Brother, My Brother, and Me and all the other shows on Maximum Fun and help us reach our highest goal ever, 10,000 new and upgrading Max Jesus. Fun members. Yeah. Y'all? I think we can do hey, it. Hey, where's my fucking hat? Max Fun threw it over the fence uh, with, the a num- 27- with a big number like that. <laughs> the 2017 Max Fun Drive kicks off on March 20th and runs for just two weeks. Visit MaximumFun.org for details and don't miss it. I'm so I, This is not a joke. Max Fun Drive is my favorite time of the year. Yeah. It's always so exciting to see people supporting us and everybody working together to make really amazing content, bonus episodes, prizes, uh, amazing event. It, I'm, I love it, and I'm very excited for it this year. Uh, I can't wait. Coming up. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, remind me after we finish recording this to tell you what our bonus episode for Rose Buddies is going to be. I'm pretty psyched. Okay, cool. Uh, 
Um, so that's it. We're going to get back to the episode now. Thank you all for listening. Thank you to everybody who helped us, who came to the show first off. Uh, it was a really, really fun night. Um, thank you to everybody who uh, has watched the show. Um, it's It's been a really, really great response. Uh, we were we were really proud of what we made, but we were obviously very very nervous. I was, I should say, I don't, I can't speak for Travis and Justin um, about what folks would think. And everybody's been so great, and so thank you all very very much. Um, friends in other countries, I I'm, I am sorry that it is not available to you right now. We are so low on the chain of people who can make that happen, but um, I hope I hope someday it'll it'll make it out to and, you. And just to be clear, we have heard your concerns. And Absolutely, like, yeah. I, I I feel fucking miserable about. It that like every time we tweet something about the show like without fail like the first five tweets i get are like i live in the uk and it sucks i can't watch this i know i'm really 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 sorry it is very very complicated to 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 make that work like there's a lot more business uh like licensing shit that goes into that than god knows that we are like making those decisions we are not at all so uh we, we are sorry and um, yeah just to be clear this was not like me justin and griffin didn't sit down and be like we're not gonna let other people see this right no, okay yeah. cool cool we want we want everybody to see it and and i hope that it will get there so and thank you to everybody who helped make the show too it was fucking great um let's get back into it uh i have a thing for the live show it's special for live shows is it more good billboard dad jokes <laughs> No, it might be the only thing. Oh, no, oh, no. No, 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 no. Wait, what? There's, okay, I just watched you flip through uh, multiple pages of this bad boy. Four, okay. Then that means, about what? what's the ETA? Like, how long can Justin and I leave the stage? Three minutes. Excellent, great news. It's in big hand. So, I put out the call on Twitter for people to submit some questions they would like to hear are some words, and these are the words I got back. This is a story. Candlelight doesn't have enough, like, tales, so I wrote a tale, and this is called Gift of the Sad Lib. <laughs> Once there was a young, moist couple named Shin Mew and Studebaker. <laughs> they were very poor. So poor, in fact, that they couldn't even afford a bootylicious salamander. <laughs> Though they had little money, they were rich in love. Shin Mew would spend hours admiring Studebaker's curvy baba ganoush, while Studebaker loved Shin Mew for their perfunctory lumbar and Gregorian fluffernutter. As the seasons changed and candlelights grew near, Shin Mew decided that they would purchase Studebaker a pedantic candlelights gift no matter what. So Shin Mew sold their most precious possession, a frictionless pumpkin that Stanley Tucci had given them while filming The Devil Wears Prada, in which Shin Mew played a very small role. With that money, Shin Mew purchased a gooey, teeny-weeny, gelatinous chumbawamba that could per- <laughs> that would perfectly complement Studebaker's most prized possession, a poopy didgeridoo shaped like a capybara, given-, <laughs> given to them by the Utah Jazz. <laughs> Shin Mew raced home, hands throbbing with hornswoggle, knowing how much Studebaker was going to defenestrate when they saw the chumbawamba. Studebaker, I've Googled you the most perfect chumbawamba to go with your didgeridoo. What? Why? Because it's your favorite? No, I hate... No, I hate that thing. I only displayed it in case the Utah Jazz ever visited. Well, crap, I wish you'd said something. I sold my pumpkin to buy this. No, not the pumpkin Stanley Tucci gave you. Yes, of course the one Stanley Tucci gave me. How many pumpkins do I have? Well, can you return the Chumbawamba and buy back the pumpkin? I don't know, maybe. I'll try tomorrow. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Oh, here, I got you a gift certificate to Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, cool. I do need a new towel. The end. Thank you. I did work very hard on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I worked very hard on that. Thank you. Would you like me to read it again? No, no, no. That won't work. Once there was a young, moist couple named Shen Mew and Turn Shen off Mew. all of the lights in the theater oh, and everybody... Welcome back. 
wow, that was a that really sucked, Trav. <laughs> another another bad one. Everybody loved it. Did they love it? Yeah. They laughed and clapped a lot. Yeah, it seemed like they were really going crazy for they it. They were really into it. Playing all the hits. It is. This is the bit densest episode of Mbim Man that's ever existed. I'm going to do a jingle, monthly observance. This is the... This is the only one that we are ever going to put on TV, so we're playing all the hits. And this hit is, is a Haunted Doll Watch. Today's doll that is haunted is... Sorry? Start over, because... Today's doll that is haunted... Okay. Uh, is, is the title on uh, the Electronic Bay uh, auction... Site. Auction Zone. Auction Zone. Haunted doll, very active, needs a home. Oh, Her name is Adeline. Hello and welcome to my store. I'm happy to offer one of many spirits up for sale. I love, I love an eBay profile that's like, welcome, stranger. <laughs> come on in. Got a lot of good. Get things. out of the rain. Come in. Got a lot of in. good things on sale today, stranger. We have many curiosities for you to peruse. What are you buying, stranger? What are you selling? What are you selling? What are you selling? What are you, selling? What are you buying, really stranger? Good, uh, Japanese zombie video game goofs. <laughs> She's the spirit of a 20-year-old little girl. Okay, that Wait, doesn't what? make... Hold on, sorry? <laughs> what? Not, not a great start. Uh, she resides within a beautiful vintage doll that gives off so much beautiful energy and so much joy. Really this, selling it. This is where we go off the rails. Adelaide was given to me by a, man, <laughs> by a man by the name of Marcus Miller. We're going to talk about editing and concision later, but it was given to her by Marcus, Mar- Marcus Miller. Marcus has been collecting spirit dolls for over 25 years, and he came across this fascinating spirit five years ago during a trip to Bulgaria. Mm. Mm. She, was, she was locked away in a glass case in an elder man's store. I guess they mean elderly, but I do like the idea of a store that caters to the elderly gentleman. She was a spectacle for the town to come and look at. Hello. Hey, how's your town doing? Because it sounds pretty boring. Hey, Todd, I'm coming to visit this weekend. What should I not miss? Oh, well, Um, um, we got this store for very old people. (laughs) Uh, She's been locked away for over 20 years. She was stuck and unable to see the world. She died. That's so sad. She, she, she be, died she in the fair? early 40s. This is a gift from her grandmother for her 12th birthday. Marcus offered the man $2,000 to get Adelaide out of the glass <laughs> box. The man, like, why does it have to be a short story? Your doll is haunted. Yeah. Like, it should, like, it should just say, this is a doll that's haunted by ghosts. Yeah. Really, also, really quick, what is the eBay buy it now price on this doll? Oh, well, Griffin, that's going to be $300. I just want to say that in the, money. That's a lot. Of, first of all, that's a lot of money. But also, Marcus, a significant loss, my friend. <laughs> it's Bulgaria dollars. Okay, well then, I no, I don't they, know. I do want to say that the elder man is also really bad at business. If his haunted doll in a glass case brings them in from miles around, yeah. and Marcus is like two thousand bucks, and he's like, yeah, sold, yeah, done, good, I'm done. Sure. I'm very. I'm short. never gonna get that much again. Yeah, I'm very short sighted. I'm just, they, it closes with a pretty great list, so I'm just going to hit you with these bullet points. I want to ensure the person purchasing her understands how active she really is. She will move her doll host around the house at night. She will play with toys found in the home. She can be heard laughing from time to time. She can be heard knocking on walls and doors. She must be spoken to with a spirit box or if you have the gift face-to-face. <laughs> I do like that they switch from will to can, like, she might not she do must. these things, but she'll definitely do you those You will things. get wet. She loves animals, so be prepared to find your dog or cat always near her. Where's the dog? Well, this is actually convenient. I know exactly where the dog is. Yeah, the, doll only ha- the dog only hangs out with the haunted doll I bought for $300. I'm very sorry again, Victoria. I don't want to break it up and go through the whole thing, but I'm sorry I bought a $300 haunted doll. All the money from her sale will be going to help Marcus during her, his last few months with us. Jesus, please. How's your twist? 
How's the twist doing in the story? And by twist just means we don't read far enough ahead on any of the things we prepare for the live show. There's some parts I might have skipped because I didn't do a good job of reading all of it. Sorry. If you want to Google this at home, you should probably have a cup of cocoa with you or something. It's not all, it's not all giggle, giggle, fart up here. There's some, this story takes some hard twists that you want to be prepared for. Uh, do you guys want to yacht? Is that it for Haunted Doll Watch? Usually you say, like, you give it a button. Uh, it's $300. And it's haunted, so buy it now. Okay, thank you. How about a quick Yahoo, and then maybe we get to audience questions? Sure. Yeah. We're gonna do. We're gonna kick the audience questions. You all know the rule for audience questions, right? No right. If that was, if you if you couldn't pick out the message from that uh, Greek choir, it's no bummers. Um, here's a Yahoo though, and uh, it was sent in by Brooks Oglesby. Thank you, Brooks. And uh, I have to find it. This, please don't. Nobody look at me. Okay, I got it. It's from Yahoo Answers. User dot dot dot. Yo. Nice. Yo. Yo. Asks, why does the New Year's ball keep getting smaller? (laughs) Every year that blank. So, not not today, friend. Not on this show. Uh, Every year that blank drops its number of crystal lights by like 2,000. Are we that poor? In 2004, it was massive, and 2012's ball is tiny, no more than the size of my right testicle. (laughs) I'm no doctor. Hey, yo, hey, yo, I know we just met. Yo, how's your testicles? Because they, they might be very, very sick. Well, like... And just reading into the words, like, one of them might be? The other one seems like, okay, where do you buy pants? <laughs> also, I just don't know that I want to be friends with someone who looks at anything and is like, that's about half the size of my testicle. That's about twice the size of my testicle. That's uh, spot on. Just right. Yahoo Answers user Gork Bark Pork Duke Gefunk and Fubar. Oh no, Which you was, used up all the name. That was the German name for Beetlejuice. <laughs> they had to say it three times. And then he'd show up and be like, Gork Bark. <laughs> Gork Bark has some fun facts about the ball because he's a person on the internet. Of course he knows everything about the New Year's ball. Uh, it's a geodesic sphere, 12 feet in diameter, and weighs 11,875 pounds. Just like this dude's a right testicle. <laughs> Oh no! You're you you're I don't, you're walking a little funny today. One of my testicles weighs eleven thousand pounds. It's made of dark matter. It's covered in two thousand six hundred eighty-eight Waterford crystal triangles. Please help me. Which are bolted to six hundred seventy-two LED modules on the aluminum frame. Help me, God! I've been cursed by the Baba Yaga. <laughs> you know, if Liberace were alive today, <laughs> is there anything good about having this? Well, the ball is capable of creating a palette of more than 16 million vibrant colors and billions of patterns. That sounds nice. (laughs) That part's good. It's good, yes. I sure do love my beautiful, crazy big ball. (laughs) But it keeps getting smaller every Every year. (laughs) I'm so worried. Oh. Uh, Do you want to... Do we have a mic? Yeah, I think. Yeah. We, do we have a mic down there? We we said yes, but the the answer might. Can we be. bring up the house lights? Oh, here we go. Yes. Sullivan's got oh, it. Thank hey, you, thank Sullivan. you, Michael Sullivan. I want to I want to start first. It, yeah, everybody, give yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we get the house lights up a little bit? Yeah, just a little a bit little of house bit, lights, like just so we can see. A little uh, bit of house lights, maybe we can. Possible. Um, I want to start actually real quick. If you were the person that talked to me in the line outside about this specific segment, could you come ahead down? It's just one gentleman. That asked me about this segment specifically. Hi, I'm. From, hi, hi, there we go. I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. I'm from uh, Texas. Hi. Oh, hi. I almost, called, I almost said hi, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we drove all the way up here uh, just for the show. Oh, wow. that's a lot of driving. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. My girlfriend loves you guys. Biggest fan. We listen to all your shows. Uh, well, thank thank you for making the trip up. <laughs> uh, what's your What's your question? So, uh, my girlfriend said that in order for me to ask her to get married and for her to say yes, I'd have to ask you on this show. You had to ask us or uh, ask her. her? Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine with it. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so nervous. <laughs> you can. Hey, is she here? Yes. Yes, she's here. Good, because if she oh, wasn't, God. this bit was about to get very strange. You got to come down. Come on down. Hey, can we get, like, all the house lights? House hey, can lights, we get please. house lights, like, up? Just so we can see. Is there anyone back there? Anyone back there could just turn on the house light? Yeah. yeah there we go. There we go. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm very good. No pressure. You didn't, you didn't hear any of that, did you? <laughs> no. Well, you walked down, so so far, so good. Yeah. So far, so good. Go this ahead. This is Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hello. Hey, homie, I know it's our show, but this is your moment. All right. <laughs> Ellie? Get up on that mic, though. It's for them, Ellie. too. It's all of our moments. I love you so much. You make me extremely happy. Shh. Will you marry me? Of course. She said yes. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. <laughs> hey. Hey, great job, you guys. Great job. Do you, who's going to follow that? No. All right, go ahead. Thank you all for coming. Uh, who else got a good question? I want to say yes. Person who can't contain their excitement, yeah, with the hat, just touch the brim of their hat. And is making their way already out into the yes. aisle. And is walking down the aisle. Well, I hope you guys can help me. Okay. Well, what's your I, name? My name is Jack. I Hi, Jack. am from Virginia. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, since Hi. we're saying where we're from. <laughs> Um, so I drive for a living. Okay. Like I'm a delivery driver and I have a big problem. I'm really bad at like saying hello to people and greeting people. I thought you were going to say I drive. Yeah. <laughs> well, a, you know that too. It's a real crazy taxi situation. <laughs> so what I'll do is someone will go, Hey, how's it going? And I'll say in the exact same tone of voice, Hey, how's it going? That's fine. That, that'll get you through. That's how I get through most conversations. I, I can tell you, that's better than me, where most of the time I will open my mouth to respond and no sound will come out. And she's like, how you doing? Oh, that, that's happened too. Or they'll go, drive safe, and I'll go, you too. Oh, yes. I <laughs> instinctively right say you too to just most things. The good news is the advantage that you're working under is when people see you, it is the happiest they have been to see anyone all day, every yeah. time, guaranteed. <laughs> and also, they thought you would never come, and it's, your very presence is a miracle. <laughs> you, I don't even know what you deliver, but I've never seen a delivery person show up in my house and be like, ah, dang. No, one, no one's ever placed a delivery and said, I hope this gets here whenever. <laughs> hey, what do you deliver? Um, food. It's all food, because I'm, like, freelance. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. All you have to do when is look at him and go, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to go outside. Yeah. You were, you were hungry before, but soon you shall not be. You are very welcome. And then bow very deeply to them and like, As a per- I've yeah. been Jack, and walk away. Yeah. <laughs> I've been Jack. Thus concludes our conversation. <laughs> you know, I've, I've ordered a lot of food uh, in my life. One thing I've never thought is, man, I hope we can get a good convo going. <laughs> Job one for me is just getting a cr- get like crushing a good combo with this 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 person bringing my zada me. Um, oh God, you couldn't have asked us a question that we How are less qualified to, to like answer. Another human. We have we have so we've been we've been shooting the show for three weeks now, and uh, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really good show. Uh, there have been a few segments that have tanked, and each one has a connective tissue, and it's been, we have to have a single conversation with a person. <laughs> now, we, now we've had a lot of really great conversations with people. It's like, just go out on the street and start chatting. Like, oh, my favorite. <laughs> All you have to do to, like, panic us into, like, being frozen is say, 
hey, here's a human being, and they don't know what you do. Have fun. Have, have fun. fun. Enjoy. Uh, uh, do you want to... Uh, no. Actually, literally, every time we have a conversation with somebody that's, like, structured ahead of time, we actually have to ask, like, did you tell them, like, what we did are? Did you tell them what we are, the monsters have, we are? Have they listened? Um... I think I think Justin's right, and it's just expediency is the key. I actually don't want you to have conversations with people because that's more time that you're spending not getting food to the next person, which could be me. <laughs> oh, I 100% agree. I just don't want to go, well, bye. That's great. No, <laughs> that's good. Like, that's perfect. Don't overthink if you it. Could, if, if, you could get, if you could get a utility belt full of smoke bombs, I think that would be... <laughs> Acceptable. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you you cracked your question. Thank you. All right, let's go right side. Uh, donkey, donkey shirt on the aisle there. Yes. That's an excellent donkey shirt. That's a fine donkey shirt. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Lee. I'm from Vancouver. Or from Vancouver. I'm from Toronto. I'm on your fantasy football league. Hi, Hi Lee. How's, uh, how's the league going? Are you, are you doing so well? So far, so good this year. Okay, it's, good. You know, always a mixed bag early in the season. Excellent, excellent. It's dicey. What's your question? It's a candle night themed question, in fact. Excellent. That's fantastic. Uh, my family, several years ago, I'm the youngest of four siblings, we gave each other Christmas nicknames. Uh, and so now it's, they're candle night Sorry, nicknames. no. <laughs> These are names just for the day? Just for the day? Oh, it's like a month long process. There's a flurry of emailing back and forth where you kind of exclusively get addressed by that. Nickname for a really extended period it's, of time. It's great. It's great. You just dropped it like you know a Christmas nickname. <laughs> I. Who among us hasn't done this with their Lee, own family? I'm gonna need an example. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Lee, hit me with some choice ones. <laughs> so my nickname is the most blasphemous. I am Baby Lezus. <laughs> Baby Lezus. There it go. It's adorable. Uh, my mom is my favorite. Her name's Donna. She's Don Don. We now are gay apparel. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot, but it's very good. Some of them good. are hard. My brother-in-law Warren got Good King Warrens this last because it's like really hard to find one for Warren, so we just yeah, sure. cram stuff in there. So what is what is your? So question? my question is this: My brother and I are both currently single. We have historically had partners who got Christmas nicknames, and now they don't, and we have to like retire those nicknames, and it's a weird thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if we get we've f- all been there. Finger scooping <laughs> again, yeah. Fingers crossed we get future partners. Uh, and then, what, like, at what point do we give them the nickname? Sort of like, yeah, this is it. First, We're gonna- first, first of all, can I please say what I'm about to say? Because, oh, boy, <laughs> it's going to be good. You have to sew the name of your ex-partner's Christmas nickname uh-huh. onto a stocking and then very slowly raise it up into the ceiling. <laughs> This is good because I made my ex a stocking. It's going up into the ceiling <laughs> into the very rafters, slowly. Like, yeah, okay. yeah, and forever. then it's going to stay there forever, which is actually kind of a weird monument. I like it. Uh, but anybody who sees it's going to be like, that's that. good prop comedy. Well done, Griffin. Yeah. That's a conversation piece. <laughs> I, here's the answer is, unfortunately, amorphous, but also wonderful. When they earn it. Mm. Oh. <laughs> And you won't know when that is, and they won't know when that is, okay. but the moment will happen, well, they'll say something or do something, and everyone will kind of, like, nod at each other, like, that was it. It's time. Right then. Right. And okay. they'll feel really good yeah. when that happens, yeah. and they'll know. They'll and know. everyone will know, and it will be magical. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm I, pretty I sure that, that didn't answer? help at all. Yeah. No, not even a little bit. But I take it because I our, can't our think answer of an answer. To that so one was, I can't our answer to that one was literally candle nights magic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What better answer is there? I, I hope that helped. It didn't. But okay. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you, baby Lisas. How much time do we have? Uh, we got time. Long, we got time for like one more. I have a thing. Is there a representative from Recovery Point here? Yes, maybe? Yes, yes. hi, hello. Hi. So hi. Recovery Point is uh, a, a, a group in Huntington that helps with uh, addiction recovery. And so we were going to donate the money from the poster sales, uh, which is $1,240. We were going to donate that. Uh, but we can. I'm sorry. We need it. Listen. Yeah, but, <laughs> Listen. Times are tight. But I decided not to. And instead, what we're going to do is donate this and the profits from the show uh, to Recovery Point. Uh, which equals out to, thanks to everybody here, uh, about $12,000. Um, come on up. 
We got some money. Thank you so much for helping our city and helping people struggling with drug addiction. We did it together. That's a very, very cool miracle that... Just real quick, and I'm going to talk real quiet so the mics can't hear us. Yeah. Um, I just bought a hot tub <laughs> because I thought I was going to make like $3,000 off this show. I, I got, so I have a hot... I got, I I, was, it's, I got it from Rena Center, <laughs> and I try, really, I, really needed that. So. I got... I got really into cocaine. No, that's not a good thing to say. Oh, no. I ne- daddy, well, daddy needs. That I'm glad we donated the money. Me too. No, <laughs> just kidding. This is a joke. Just, uh, just a joke. You're uh, welcome. I'm uh, sorry. That was a poor taste, admittedly. But I do hope you enjoy the money very much. <laughs> well, we're going to wrap this one up for all three. Uh, uh. <laughs> but no, enjoy Justin, the money. Justin has this thing during live shows where he um, forgets the last thing we immediately just said. So it's been a long it's shoot. Been a it's long been shoot. Three weeks. We're going to be walking that one off for a while. Thank you so much to uh, our everybody who helped make. Uh, tonight, possible uh, Chase and Michael and all their crew. Everyone at City Hall. Yes. Everyone at City Hall. Thank you. Thank to you to the greatest mayor of any city ever, Mayor Steve Williams. <laughs> thank you to uh, everybody who worked on our TV show so tirelessly and put up with a bunch of our crap. Uh, JD and Greg and Jackie and Seth and Alex and Bill and. Kelsey and everybody, everybody, Nicole, everybody who who helped us. Thank you so much. Uh, and and to Jill and Seth and Shannon who spent all day decorating this and making yes. this look so good. Yes, and Nicole, and thank Steve you. Steve Gruskin and everybody at Embassy Row. Yeah, thank you to and thank you to Stacy and Debbie. And yeah, everybody. thank you to Stacy and Debbie at Embassy Row. Uh, I feel like it's weird. We're like making a TV show, and so whenever people like thank people who like worked with them on entertainment things, was they like win an Emmy? Which hey, who, let's see, 2017. What's up? I always think like oh they're just hobnobbing rubbing elbows like we like I'm so grateful to all of those people because yeah. they helped us make this really cool thing so thank you all very, thank very much thank you and promise everybody that you'll uh, watch the show when it comes out I yeah, hope it'll be good. be good so here's the way this podcast works though speaking of podcasts here's where this podcast works uh, in every episode we have uh, what did you have some? no I'm have? just getting ready to do the thing I'm just okay, well, so just excited wait, just wait for the thing at the end of every episode oh Crap, thank you. Also, I just want to say real quick, thank you to Sawbones and, and Schmanners and Still Buffering. Buffering. And uh, I think, was it Things I Bought at Sheets was the one? Things I Bought at Sheets. Dwight and everybody, thank you to all those shows too. Uh, every week on My Brother, My Brother, Me, we wrap up with a final Yahoo, something that we can uh, marinate on and come back to. Marinate on? <laughs> hey, yep. listen, after that, maybe you could just like hang with me for like a yeah, second. Sure. And uh, Griffin says it, and we pretend that we'll talk about it later. Griffin, go. This one was sent in by Kevin Regal. Thank you, Kevin. It's by Yahoo. Answers user, dedicated to evolution, who asks, Wouldn't Harry Potter movies be so much better if Will Smith was Dumbledore? My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. My name is Patrick. My name is Parker. Max FunCon has been a huge inspiration in my life. And now I have this network of friends that I've made that span literally across the entire globe, and they're some of my favorite people in the world. I truly cannot believe the amount of wonderful and lasting friendships that have come out of this. If you feel like you might not fit in, as long as you're a good person, you'll fit in because everyone there is good and amazing and kind and wonderful and you should absolutely go it will be the best decision of your life make a ton of new friends like parker and patrick at max fun con 
Tickets for Max FunCon and Max FunCon East are on sale now at maxfuncon.com. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.